yes, yes, people, welcome back to the Mac by Channel TV. Welcome to Tune Therapy episode two. Big Oaks in the building. What are you saying, mate? Oh, yeah. First and foremost, what's happening, everyone? I hope you lot are blessed. Have a good day. Um, but what am I saying? I'm good, man. Listen, I'm, 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 on, I'm on, on a good vibe today, man. Good mm. vibe, good vibe, man, because I think positive, isn't it? So, like, like, like I said last time, I think now is about being positive. So I'm positive. I'm chilling. Literally, I'm happy that we got up the three points on, on on Tuesday. So yeah, I'm guessed. That's what we're going to talk about in this therapy session. This therapy hour, we're going to talk about the Everton win, the Villa preview. Look towards a huge game on Sunday, and anything else you lot want to talk about. Get your comments coming in. I can see us already. Paul's confident of a two-one win over Villa on Sunday. Alex brings up a good point of Matt Target not being able to play against his parent club. Good, mate. Hope you're well. Even Aaron, he's doing well. Still got a stonk on after the game. <laughs> Troops in Bruno. <laughs> Proper got me going. Love to see that. And a shout out to our sponsors. Who knows wins? Shout out them for sponsoring this video. Make sure you download the app that's in the description. Play along with me. See if you can beat me in this weekend's top 10. Right then. So, folks, I guess you were watching at home way for the... Uh, Big three-one win over Everton. I was just, watching it. Listen, I was watching it on my sofa, like just loud. It was it was loud, man. I I made sure I caught I caught everything, like the the pre-match build up, you know, everything because it was it was for us such a big game. It was probably our biggest game of the season. If 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 it wasn't that one, then it was the, the game against Norwich at home. But it was a massive game for us because um, it sets the tone. It was the first game after the new channel, or the window closed. So it was vital that something happened, something positive happened. Um, but yeah, I, I, I sat there watching it, and do you know what? As well, like, I wasn't nervous um, watching the game to be honest with you, because Everton, not Everton. So uh, and like obviously, yeah, they beat Brentford, but I didn't feel like they were going to come out and, and do something magical. So it, it was our game to win, and also our, our game to lose as well. So. And then the boys just done what 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 the boys done. So, so were you not worried about Frankie Lampard coming in, new managerial bounce? Got a win against Brentford four one in the cup, didn't he? Yeah, man. But it, it, I wasn't worried, but it, it was more of a factor to consider. I, you know, you know, like oh, how would Everton sort of turn up? You know, because now they've got changing, and, and so do we. And obviously, I did think that we were going to see a different Everton in terms of. The Evan, that, the Evan that was happening for, for the last two, three weeks ago, and the Evan on the Lampard, that they were going to be different, um, but they were the same Everton. Um, but do you know what? As well, I feel like the injuries helped us. Yeah, so, big time. Big time. So uh, because obviously that that sort of took their thing out of their game plan. Gray was Gray has been their best player, hasn't it? Mm. So um, obviously him coming off and then Mina coming off, two big players for them that helped us a lot. So. After that happened, it was it was it was, it was our game to win. To be honest with you, um, even when they scored, that like, the main thing I wanted is for the stadium to stay working because each time teams come in and score first, that like, um, it's normally it, isn't it? Do you like yeah, when it. we when we normally concede first, especially under Bruce and that, you always just the heads yeah. drop, the yeah, moment that everything's gone. You think, even though it's only one goal, and I think a big thing was Trippier. Trip, yeah, picking up Target and Shaw on the lane after they couldn't get rid of Everton's goal, bounced in, and he picks them up, motivates them, gets them back to the touch lane. It's like, how are lads? There's still a long way to go in this game. And it was unreal to see like an instant response, wasn't it? Lascelles at the other end. Yeah. Um, and and I'm, I'm, I'm glad for him. I'm so happy for him as well because the on goal was unfortunate and he's been getting a lot of stick in it. So um, I'm sure his head almost dropped himself. Like, obviously, when, when, when the ball hit him and, and went into the goal, I just see him like just like hands in his head, like thinking, "Oh my goodness, why me?" You know, I mean? like I'm sure he he would rather it, it be someone else than himself, obviously. But um, so I, I was glad to see that he he sort of made an impact straight after. But the, the reason for that was because of the cross. That cross, as soon as it left Trippier's foot, I said, "What a ball!" Because it he he didn't sort of do a, a tread sort of crossing where it was like sort of. Uh, like um, on the curler sort of thing, he like whipped. It wasn't yeah, whipped, yeah, was yeah. it? Was like floater, nice little floater. Yes, that's it. Like it wasn't whipped. He floated it, but he floated it with pace. So with pace, where 
it, it, it was floated enough for, for our players to get on the ball and, and sort of, like, you know, cause some damage in it. So I think with, without Trippier, that goal doesn't happen, obviously. But um, And he's going to be vital for us going forward for that reason, set pieces. Because now set pieces were a threat because now we've got two players, two fullbacks who know how to cross the ball. And my target deserves a shout out because I don't remember what half it was, but I think, I think it was first half. First half, he, he just done a, 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 a ball in. And I've not seen us be so dangerous from the flanks, but from, from our defenders in, in a long time on both sides. So it's glad to, to see that both both our fullbacks will hit the guy running and and and, and, are, and, are, and are being effective. But overall, man, it's, it's been happy days. Unbelievable days. And like you said, Matty Target, as far as the debut goes, doesn't get much better than that, does it really, for a defender as well? Like, he was so comfortable. I mean... When we signed Target, what was what was your reaction to that? Did he surprise you in how in good how good he was? I think he compliments Saint Maximin, doesn't he, on that left hand side? You know what? I've always been a, I've always been a fan of my Target. Uh, he's one of the people that I have I had in my fantasy team as well. So um, I'm aware of his capabilities, sort of uh, attacking wise. Anyways, he's got a decent left foot. So when we signed him, I thought, you know what? Um, it's it's a great signing. Um, I didn't believe we needed another left back. That wasn't sort of my my priority place to to sort of say that. I believe we would would have needed another centre back or another striker. Um, um, but when we got him, and I said, you know what, like, he starts anyways. He he's us. He starts, um, and we we saw why we, we brought him in, and obviously what Eddie has good game plan is. And mm-hmm. I thought we were going to be five at the back. Yeah, um, but it was four, four at the back, but maybe that changes when Dan, Dan Byrne comes in. We'll see, but I don't want us to do five at the back because it changes the shape, um, and it where we we'll sort of miss a body in midfield, and I feel like <laughs> that's. I feel like now midfield is probably our, our strongest point. <laughs> you know that that's <laughs> in the mid area, apart from from the fullbacks, but sort of in that middle. Now we, we we have some legs and some body and some depth as well with Bruno coming in. Um I don't I don't see why Eddie Howe would, would sort of sacrifice somebody um and but and do that. But uh, again it's it's about trusting the manager, man. But um I don't think he would uh, sacrifice his formation either, would he? Like the four three three seems to be his. That's what he's wanting he's played since he came in, really. That's what he wants to do going forward. Um but it is a big one on Sunday for Target not being there, who steps in? Then do you think it'll be Dan Bain? Because predominantly played left back up until this season, really, and then this season he's been centre back at Brighton. But he's he was uh, brilliant for Brighton last year at left back. So do you reckon he'll step in, or what do you think is going to happen there? Because Richie's obviously still got a, a knock, hasn't he? He's not going to be fit. Dummett's forever injured, so I guess there's not much choice, is there? Young man, Queer or or Bain? I think it depends on Trippier because because I. Nice. And injured as well. So if Trippier's fit, then I'll put Mankey in the ASAP because because he's decent down forward and he's quicker than Burn. Um, but hopefully, yeah, Trippier's fit. But then obviously, if Trippier's not fit, then obviously it's got got to be Dan Burn or maybe move Trippier to the left hand side and maybe mm. having I don't know like a Jacob Murphy or something. But, but because obviously Trippier's so versatile uh, and we've seen him play. On the left hand side for England as well, um, so it might against Croatia. So it might be something that we could use if Dan Burns not fit enough, or if Eddie Howe doesn't feel confident in Burn playing left back, and then obviously have um, Mankey on the right. And that takes. Well, I think we'll just keep doing this. We'll go through the team that we think is going to play on Villa because one of the big total points, and people are bringing it in the comments. Make sure you just keep them coming in, and we'll get onto them soon. I like to say midfield was amazing versus Everton, but honestly struggled who to bench for Bruno. And this is once we've got past the left back issue on Sunday and maybe even trip you out right back. This is it, isn't it? Do you start Bruno? And if you do, who do you drop? I start Bruno, man. Um I, I was surprised, but anyhow, but anyhow, Eddie Howe made the right call by not starting him because we 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 are a winning team and we have to show that he, he needs to work hard to get into this team. And you can see as well what like new signings, right? It's not it's not only for sort of new signings to come in and to, to sort of play well. New signings they add a boost to players because players think now you know oh, oh shit like 
I have now competition for my spot. So the, the players are have added probably an extra ten percent to the game. Willick especially. Um, yeah. Willick, uh, even Lascelles, mate, even Lascelles with Bain yeah. being there, like best he played for a while the other night after the, the early the early incident, which he couldn't do yeah. much about anyways, but exactly that. So I think I, I think now there's competition for places now. Players players have to step up. Um, and it's a tough one because Willock was great against Willock against Leeds was great. <laughs> like people, mm. my friends, my friends were questioning me, thinking um, because probably I think that's the first game they've they've, they've, they've seen they've seen us play, or whatever. But they were thinking, what, like, why are you get why are you why are you always getting onto Willock for? Like, look look what he's doing. But they they don't understand. Like that was the first time, probably this season, that we've seen the old Joe Willock from, yep. from last year against Leeds because he was bringing us forward, sort of carrying the ball the ball forward, which is what he's good at with his legs and energy. And then obviously the game against Everton, he was doing the same thing. He he was the reason, was it that Fraser scored because he won the ball back off Ali. Um, uh, yeah. I, 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 I believe so. So obviously he's be, he's been great. He's he's been obviously doing what we want him to do. Uh, but I think with with Villa, Villa that like, I watched them yesterday play against Leeds and Villa, they Villa Villa fight Villa fight like if. If you if you know what you're going to get from Villa now under Gerard, you're going to get the quality with obviously the players they've got in with Coutinho etc. But you're you're going to get effort and energy and, and and fight. So with that being said, and it's going it's going to be a physical game. So with that being said, you have to play big Joel in there. Mm. Um, obviously Shelby doing a four role, being that pivot, you have to play big Joel in there, and then I'll play Bruno. So drop Willock. Drop Willock because. Mm. Drop him based on long-term form, not based on the last two games. I said drop him. And obviously, yeah, obviously we've, we won two in a row and people are saying, how, how can you now sort of mix up a, a winning team? But you can, of course you can. Pep does it all the time. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's a thing of getting Bruno up and running. And we saw what he can do in, in those last three minutes. Oh, man. We saw, we, we saw what he can do. Like, I was like, okay, fair, okay, man, fair enough. He, he's, he's confident. Do you get me? He's he, he's he's bringing the, the Brazil to, to Newcastle, um, and, and then straight away, straight away, straight you, away. you can straight see, away. you can just tell, can't you, with players when they're good enough, when they're a baller, and when they when they're not, and with mm. Bruno, straight away, you just know he's he's good enough, don't you? you? Know, like for that to be his Premier League debut, a few minutes in stoppage time, and he had six it? six touches and set nearly set up a goal, like. <laughs> How was it for you, like being there, like with the oh. fans and stuff? What, what, when, when, when you come on? Because I was gassed, like I got, I, I had a piece part, man. The first time, ah, I went to the so how, how was it just being there? And how did the fans take to him as well? It was amazing because being three one up as well, we knew the game was in the bag. Yeah. We watched. We were shouting for Bruno for about half an hour. He was warming up since about the 60th minute, and everyone, the whole yeah. stadium, was shouting Bruno, Bruno, waiting for him to come on. He was lapping it up, loving it. He kept on looking over to Eddie Howe, like, "Can I come on now, Jimmy? I'm ready, Eddie. Can you put us on the pitch, mate?" When he came on, the reception he got was outstanding. And then I think he he thrives on that, like, because he wanted the ball all the time. He was giving and going. It. He was getting stuck in, like, for a few minutes, only playing a few minutes. The impact he had. That's why I want to see him stock. So I, I want to see what he can do from the off. Mm, and he's going to yeah. have a few days this week training as well, getting bedded in, um, buzzing to see more of Bruno. Like he looks like a top top player. So that, that's why I say he starts above Willet because you can't really bench Joe. Joe's been great for us. Big Joe's been great for us. So, um, but it's just in, in in front of goal, he's not the best. But I feel like Bruno will. Bruno, I believe, has more goals in him and or has more creativity. Than we look, um, and for us, can be more effective based on how, how we play as well. Um, so that's why I say Bruno, and plus, as well, obviously, them both be, being Brazilian, they can both speak speaking their language and, and sort of do the dirty work together, you know, work together and, and sort of build that part partnership ahead of Shelby. So for me, it uh, for me, he has to start. It was a surprise that he didn't, he didn't start against Everton, but rightly so. But come on, come on now, start him now. You know, get him in the team, get him going, get him feeding the ground and, and feeding the ball on the pitch. Um, so, yeah, he starts a new one. I think with Willock as well, we've seen it through his loan spell yet last year, didn't we? How good he is yeah. off the bench. Anyway, he's yeah. a super soldier. Just, just, 
Yeah. Help him on because he always seems to come to life in the second half of games anyways more. So I would use him off the bench. Like, I think that's a shout. Will it no, go? And, you know, exactly. Yeah, and what, what, what you said there is a, is, is, a, is a bigger shout like him coming off the bench because Willock is he's, 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 he's a tank. He's fitting it. So... Uh, that, that's why that, that's why in the second half we see him. He's probably the one the, the one doing the most running. So bringing bringing him on second half or towards, towards the end of the game or last I don't know half an hour or whatever it means means we have got a fresh Joe Willock. So that adds something extra to our game, you know. So and that could be why he was getting those goals because he had an advantage uh, advantage as well because he's so fit naturally and then he's coming on and he's sort of. Making those runs and and and, and sort of like uh, two yards ahead of his man. So um, yeah, and based on that, you've further confirmed why I think to start uh, Bruno. Yeah, everyone's saying start Bruno. Everyone wants to see Bruno from the off. We're going to touch on uh, Ryan Fraser now, wee man with a goal mm-hmm. for Newcastle that took were two one up. Yeah, have you seen the effect of Eddie Howe? On him as well, and since he came in, because it was funny actually. If you watch uh, watch Fraser's interview on NUFC TV, That's he gets it. asked he gets asked what's changed because you've seen to improved your form a lot since since the new man just came in, and he laughs and he says, "I'll be careful what I say here," but mm. uh, ever since Eddie's came in, we're playing better football, and the team's trying harder. So <laughs> massive dig at Bruce without That's having to be like see it straight up. Um, which which is true, isn't it? We can see the team working harder. We can see we're more organised. We can see all of that, but we can see the likes of Shelby and Fraser improving, can't we? Under Eddie Howe, Shelby's hey, Shelby, he's improved massively because I, I think was it the second half, the second half, yeah. Um, a, a player was on his shoulder, and he was pointing um, to one one of the, the, the defenders. I, I believe it was Shaw to sort of pick up the player, but. Obviously, then that player had sort of found space and had had gotten the ball and and crossed the ball in, but then Shelby got himself back in to intercept that cross, and you, and and then and then I could just see how the cells appreciated him getting back in there. Usually, John Joe doesn't do that, you know, like get back in and and sort of stop a cross and and sort of put his his his, his body on the line. Usually, when when the, the ball's gone past Shelby, he's done. That's it. <laughs> Of recent, now he's putting his his body on the line. You know, where we're seeing a different, uh, a more mature Shelby. He just sort of needs to get that nastiness out of the game because him getting booked so early on, which uh, set up their goal as well when it was the free kick. Yeah, from... exactly. And him doing that, it, it it doesn't help us because now he's sort of double crossing himself, thinking, do I go in or, or do, do I do I stay, whatever. So he has to get that out of the game. But I've seen a, a more mature gender Shelby. But, you know, like somebody who who's now serious about his football and mm. now knows his position, you know, and he's got legs around him, so he's able to to just sort of be that pivot, you know, be that four and and and, and just sort of do that job for us. So I'm definitely pleased to see his improvement. Fraser is a funny one because I've not seen the Ryan Fraser at Bournemouth yet. That that Ryan Fraser at Bournemouth was a killer. Mm-hmm. He was a killer, and. Fraser, Fraser was working harder on on the Bruce, anyways, uh, when he played. But the only difference is, is that he's fit now, and, and he's he's playing more games. Uh, last season, Fraser was was nowhere. Do you get me? So, I think the the difference now under Eddie Howe is that he's, he's played more games. More games means more, obviously, match fitness, etc. And 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 you know you you you're up to speed, um, but. I don't know. I, I've just not seen that killer because at Bournemouth, the guy was a killer with, with, with his assisting and the finishing, etc. But I, I'm glad he got his goal uh, because he does deserve it. And hopefully, he can sort of kick on and we see that round throws at Bournemouth. The one that was was with Callum Wilson and, and Brooks just killing it up. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm, you know what, if... As long as players are, are put out, are giving their all, and, and you know they're, they're chasing, chasing down, they're pressing, you know, and, and we can see that they're doing that. I'm not mad. To, uh, do you get me? And then we've seen on the other side, Saint Maximin, with the assist for Fraser. Hopefully that partnership can develop. Match of the day last night. Don't know if you've seen it. What absolutely loving Saint Maximin, seeing he's unplayable, oh. one of the best in the world on his day, highlighting him left, right, and centre. 
he can bring that though, can't he? He can bring that because in recent weeks gone by, you know, there was a lot of Cambridge and everything. There was a lot of frustration with St. Maxman saying he's doesn't know what he's doing with his feet, doesn't know when to pass, doesn't know when to shoot. Even last night, you know, he tried to score against Pickford a couple of times on Tuesday when he could have maybe squared it, but yeah, towards, he's, yeah. he's unbelievable, though, isn't he? He's, he's just, he's unbelievable when he's on it like that, second half especially. I'm, I'm glad, again, I feel like with Fraser, uh, the same with, with Max, with Sam Maxi, is that I'm glad that, that he's fit because, again, last season uh, and the season before that was, you know, if you if you, if you, if you touch him, there's a threat of, of, of him being injured mm. or, or whatever, whatever it was. So now, you know, we're, we're seeing a more stronger uh, Sam Maxi and, from time Frank Lampard said he's unplayable, wouldn't it? That that just if Lampard is saying that about you, that means yeah, you did a mad thing, like um, <laughs> because because it, it was mad, it, 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 like it was crazy. And but I just like the fact that how Eddie Howe has him playing um, to suit the team. Obviously, yeah, there's still some bits of his game that is still the old set max of before, but I feel like because now he knows, you know, there's a vision now for the club, isn't it? It's now not. It's now not just him. Whereas before, he could he could do what he wants. You know, there's there's five guys there, five players shouting, "Hey, Maxi, pass, pass, pass!" He would beat five players, go back back to them, and try beat them again and, and lose the ball. Whereas now he's passing, he's making the right choices uh, in the final third, and he's making those those, those killer passes. I, I think when, um, for example, Murphy hit hit the post, you would see previously Maxi try and score. The best goal of the season, but obviously now he's sort of seen that he can be more effective by just playing it simple as well. Uh, but on his day and that the other day, he just went crazy and and he's a t- typical Newcastle player, like of, of of old, you know that 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 fence. entertainer, entertainer, entertainer hero. you get me, and and one that loves the fans because it's easy. It's it's so it's so easy to be a fan favorite at Newcastle. All you have to do is <laughs> give us affection and love, <laughs> because 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 we've been, we've been so vulnerable and like our hearts have been open for for so long. Whoever gives us that affection, we're gonna sort of take to them. And he's sort of seen that and, and he's done it. And like I, I just love the fact that he was just sort of at the end of the of the game, going around the ground and just embracing. Just, That's class. The the um, chance and stuff, so it's it's great it's it's great to see man. And I don't feel like he's gonna leave because now we have a vision. Whereas before, obviously he more he was playing to, to sort of make a show for himself. But now now I think his interest now is the team and himself. But it's it's, it's now more the team. So and that's how that's why we're seeing the guy that that, that we're seeing today because now he's thinking about the team and sort of. Just thinking, you know what? Like, I could make this pass, and it be it be better for the team than it be better for me. Um, and yeah, man, he's he's a joke, man. He, he's a joke. If if we could keep him fit, honestly, with Bruno coming in as well, um, and the players being on form like like, like we've been two on two, then yeah, man, we have have no, no issues um, with with going down at all. So that was a massive win the other night for Newcastle. Took out of the relegation zone. Mm. Now it's all about Sunday, doesn't it? Games coming thick and fast. Can Newcastle make it free on the bounce? Villa last night, mate. Did you catch any of the Villa game last night? Yeah, that was yeah, a madness. Yeah. That was a yeah, war yeah. last night. Um, I it, I know, free, free with Leeds. They were one 0 down, and they took the they took the lead, and then Villa uh, yeah, Leeds came yeah. back. Every, yeah. Both players on the pitch from both sides yeah. were down. Were down with cramp. Uh, <laughs> Coutinho went off. Buendia went off. Uh, Konza was sent off. So. You know, they're not going to have much time to recover from that. So, hopefully, that's a good thing for us. But Villa do look dangerous, don't they? That young Ramsey, what a player he is, Jacob Ramsey from the from the Villa Academy, 20 years old from Birmingham. He's a talent. He's a massive talent. Obviously, we've seen Coutinho before. We've seen him again last night since he's moved back to the Villa, back to the Premier League. He's a, They've got some good players, Villa. But at the back, I think they're a bit suspect, mate. You know, Mings looks a bit dodgy. They look a bit dodgy sometimes at the back. It could be it could be a, an entertaining one on Sunday, like, couldn't it? I think I think that is that is where Gerard will be looking to strengthen next defensively. Probably get a nice and a half. Break it, Diego Carlos. Since they took <laughs> Dinier and Coutinho off first, they break it, Carlos. <laughs> <laughs> nah, man. But but obviously, if we don't go down, then obviously no, they ain't getting them. But 
Nah. Um, no, but I think I think yeah, I think that's that's an error where Gerard will be doing strength. I think he's happy with his fullbacks, with Cash and and, and Dino. I'm, I'm sure he's happy with them. Uh, but defensively, that's an error that we would need to exploit because I think the game on on Sunday or whenever it is, yeah, it is like yeah, yeah. Um, will will be a battle of the, the midfield, and that's why I say play Bruno in there because Villa. Villa is going to, is Villa, the game on, um, on Sunday is going to be a battle. The same way how it, it was a battle against Leeds yesterday, it's going to be the same thing again because that's the way Gerard, that's that's Gerard's game. Gerard is intense, you know. He he, that's his game. You know, he wants he wants his players to leave everything on the pitch every every single game. So I'm um, I'm sure he was happy to see his players cramping up and and to see his players fly out because that shows that they've given it all um, for the team. And that's the villa that we're going to see again on Sunday. So uh, we we need to bring our, our dog out of us um, and, and and sort of be nasty as well because that's what's going to come. Um, and we need to match that. So it's going to be a game of probably loose balls and 50-50s. And, you know, like it's going to be a passionate game and we just, we just have to match them and exploit their defensive, their weakness in defence and probably just stick somebody on Coutinho because he loves the kind of league man. And, the last time I see him at St. James's Park for Liverpool, he scored a screamer. He scored a screamer. Um, that was the game where Jocelyn scored that nasty, fluky goal, man. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so he, he scored uh. a screamer. So, uh, and I, I, probably that's the, that's the only time I've seen him live as well. So um, we need to sort of try and nip him in the bud. But it's a game we can win, though, of course, because obviously we've won two. It's, it's it's actually only Aston Villa, like it's not Man City or it's not Chelsea, it's not any of of, of the the big six teams. It's, it's Villa, so it's definitely a game we can win. And even if you, if you look at the table, yeah, <laughs> they're not even too far from us, uh, um, in a way, because because we, we 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 if we beat them and then we have got a game in hand, I don't know. I feel like the gap's like three points if we if we win that game in hand against Saints or w- whatever it is. Um, so these teams aren't. Where um, if we beat Villa on Sunday, we would be six points off then with okay, with man. obviously having those games to play. I so like you see, I everyone's bringing up Gerard, saying he's doing a great job and everything. But if we beat Villa, we'll only be a few points off. Then we've got the games against Southampton and Everton away. Yeah, yeah. You know, so... I mean, look at this as well. Like Southampton getting that winning it. It's against Spurs last night. They're in the top ten now. It's a bit mad. Yeah, so it, it's it's actually closer than it is, but. Our job is to make it as close as possible by picking up points. Obviously, we've, we've got six in six games, six points out of six. Out of six. So, if we hadn't of, of gotten the, those six points, then we wouldn't be saying this. But we have, um, and we can do it again. Beat Villa and beat West Ham. These teams we can beat because if we want to stay up and and, and be a successful side in the Premier League and and like sort of establish ourselves as uh, a threat in this league. These are the teams that we've got to be beating them. So we've got to start from now. So Villa definitely can be beaten. Um, uh, it just depends, obviously, what Newcastle turns up. Let's hope it's Newcastle that's turned up the past two games because, <laughs> because if we can make it three in a row, and it should be. Like the players should be full of confidence. They should be on a high. They should be feeling good. We've got a couple of new players to start. I think Bernard Bruno will start on Sunday. Mm. Um, Callum's asking there, would you take a draw? A draw yeah, wouldn't be wouldn't be the worst result now, considering beating Everton. I think the draw. Yeah, you take a draw. Yeah, because I, I feel like Everton game was a must win, but a draw mm. would have been okay. But Villa's, be, Villa's more of a don't lose. Villa's more of a don't yeah, lose. Yeah. And and obviously the fact that Norwich and that Norwich won, uh, Burnley picked up points and stuff like that. So um, Villa's more of a don't lose. Like you said, they're more of a don't lose than a must win. It's not a must win. It would be great to get three points, of course. And let's let's again speak that into existence, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but um, you know, if we if we were to sort of get a draw at home, I'm not mad because then we've we're still unbeaten, uh, and you know where it shows progress, and we've come out of that losing habit as well. Uh, so I wouldn't be too fast about that, to be honest with you, but. Um, but Newcastle, anyway, is that like, what I've noticed about us in the last couple of seasons? Yeah, is that all we need is one win, and then that one win that that, that we have turns to two, then it turns to three, and it turns to four. 
so you know that like we, we 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 do it every year you know we 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 sort of go on a on a, on a winning spree and ho- hopefully we can, can sort of do that this season as well yeah we did that we do do it every year more so later on in it like april time like last exactly. year we're willing when we're picking up points against spurs and liverpool and everything yeah, exactly, but yeah Aaron's put a good point there about um, Villa's record at St. James's Park. I've just checked there. And Aston Villa haven't won at St. James's Park since 2004-2005 season. So Ooh, I know that. It's over Ooh. 15 years there in the Premier League, Villa. Um, and that was, I think, was the game when Boya and Daya had a nice little scrap in the middle of the pitch, oh, if you remember that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> when we lost 3-0. Yeah, crazy times, crazy. But I, I, oh, I mean, that's... But the thing that the, about, about these stats here yeah, that I've noticed and stuff, I don't know why, but did they actually do work or, or they, they 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 actually do matter because I feel like sometimes you know these these hoodoos or or, or or these things have an effect on the team that it affects in a, a negative way because Villa why haven't Villa won since two thousand four? Do you get so so it's it's like us at Arsenal for um, for example like we we haven't won at Arsenal. <sighs> In, in so long so these things are you know they do have some truth in it but obviously let's let's not you know um just just fall back on that you know we have to go, go out there and put in a, a performance as well we do uh, that's the big thing it's going to be a big one like for gerald versus how for it being on sky for being bruno and Bain, and let's hope i'm hoping that obviously villa injuries are a bit bad enough for them to be out of this game with them coming off last night like Coutinho and Brendio because if they were out that would be huge for us but Coutinho is probably going to be fit but I think what we need to do and instead of when we're looking around at other teams results is just look after our own and if we if that team comes out like it did against Everton and plays the way it did with Bruno with a Bain there's no reason we can't get three points or at least a draw and and the thing is exactly that and the thing is as well is that when you win games it, you, it takes less pressure off you, so and then that brings confidence. And in, in football, confidence is everything um, mm. because three points is massive. Because now players are players are doing things that they wouldn't have done if we if, if we, we if we had lost six in a row, you know. So players now are brave enough to do certain things, um, and that's as a result of, of, of confidence. So and to get that, we have to continue winning. Um, so and the, the the more we win, the less pressurized these games become. So I do feel like Villa are there for the taking. You know they're not as great as everyone makes them out to be. Um, they're just a hard working side with, with with a very good manager. Um, yeah. At the end of the day, they still have Tara Mings there who can't even use his right foot. So you know like they still have these sort of frailties in the in their squad. Um, and we just, we just like I said before, like we just have to exploit that and. And, and make sure that we're doing our part defensively. But I think defensively, with Trippier coming in, he's he's brought that winning mentality into the team. Because don't forget, he he's come from Simeone. <laughs> he's the, the nastiest of the nasty managers. He's nasty, <laughs> so he wins at all costs. He would do anything to win <laughs> at all costs. So Trippier's come from there, and I'm sure he's brought that mentality into the into the side. Because what? what <laughs> When do we ever go go down and come back and win? That mm. nah, uh, at home, anyways. <laughs> but but when it's, it's very rare, Newcastle go 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 down and they come back to turn it around to three one. That is that doesn't happen often. And it's it's huge for him from a from a right back as well. Like I mentioned before, if you notice when we concede our goal, mm. obviously Target and Shaw are on the lane trying to clear it, bounces off Lascelles. Shaw and Target are on the lane like oh nah. Trippier yeah. just comes over, picks them up, drags them back. Trippier assists the corner for Lascelles to score the equaliser, and then Trippier yeah. scores the winner in the yeah. third goal to make it comfortable after Fraser scored. So his impact is just unbelievable, man. And yeah. little bits that you notice as well. It was class when Lascelles wiped out Andros Townsend, great sliding challenge. Yeah, yeah, and then Trippier yeah. goes over and just starts slapping him on the head, like giving him yeah. a well done. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. it, the, the impact he's having on players around him. Is, is massive as well. It's uh, what I'm saying that 30 and, million is. And, and and I'm sure all these guys are happy that he's there. Uh, I'm sure themselves as a captain would, would want him to slap his head and say, oh, yeah, you know, like, great. Do you get, because at the end of the day, this guy's an experienced player um, and, you know, he's a winner. So 
he helps he helps them be better. So, like I said in the last stream that we done last week, I think Trippier for me is signing of like of, of a window and will have the biggest impact mm. based on his, based on that. That alone, his, his experience and his quality on the ball, he brings the calmness. You know that, like I said, that mentality, and and again, he he knows this league inside out as well. So, um, I, you know what? I, I don't even even have any concerns now that we're, we're, we're going to go down because now I, I believe the players believe. Whereas before, I don't, I, I didn't think they had belief, and I feel like they believe because they won the two games. Now they know that they can win games, so that's why they believe. I, I don't think the new players coming in have made them believe. I, I feel like if they were to, if they won two games in a row before this, the window, they would would have still believed. But because we we we, we sort of wasn't doing that, we was losing games, drawing games, and this just won the Burnley game. That they didn't have the, the belief that they could go to to these places and, and win games, and and belief is what you need. So now we have the belief that okay, cool, we've played two games. Leeds, who are around us, and, and we won that. Everton, who are also around us, and we won that. So why, 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 why can't I not go believe that they can, can beat Villa and also West Ham? Exactly. I mean, it's it's mad that we don't want to get two carried away after two wins in a row. But if you manage to get one on Sunday against Villa, give yourself a bit of a bit of a push. Hopefully, results go our way around the bottom three. Yeah. And then you go to West Ham, fighting West 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 Ham team who. On the down a little bit and got a bit of controversy going on, a bit of negativity around the club with Kurt Zuma. Mm. It's a lunchtime kickoff. You know, it's, there could be a vibe there for us to try and pick something else. Like, listen, if we beat um, Villa on Sunday, <laughs> our tells, or the, listen, we have bonus. <laughs> <The pools>. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, man, it's mad because like it, it's like it's like now we've won three in a row. That's it. Mm. We won three games in a row, three league games in a row. We won that. So they're gonna go out there thinking, listen, we can beat these guys easily. And they're and, and they'll go for it. So if we beat Villa on <laughs> Sunday, we have a very good chance of, of being West Ham because um form and confidence in football is everything. Yeah, and and we'll we'll be in form, you know, and, and, and still unbeaten in, 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 in 2022. Um and, and we would have won all our league games in 2022. So um, why not I believe that? And you know, like these teams, like I said before, it's not like it's Man City or Chelsea or Liverpool. The, 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 where I believe that we are, are we are bigger clubs than than all the other clubs. The Villa Villa are a big club, anyways. But I believe with Newcastle, we are we are a massive club. We're bigger than West Ham. So why should we, regardless of where they are in the league, fourth or fifth or, or, or wherever they are, we should. Go there thinking we could still beat them, even if we didn't win um, on on Tuesday, because it's West Ham. Yeah, it's 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 like us us going to Wolves and you know these teams at the minute, you know, they're not bigger than us or, 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 or better than us, and they, they they won't be in the future. So why can't we go there and say, listen, you know, boys, like, like let's 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 give our all and get the the three points there. But if we do that against Villa on Sunday at home. And it being at home, so it's it's a huge advantage as well because you know that buzz that that was it was in the ground it stays where it is it stays where it is you know we we don't go and play elsewhere where we're back to to where we we just won so mm. um, I just hope the boys pick off the energy and, and and the fans do the same thing again stick by the boys even if we go go down stick by us just stick by them and make every game a, make every game a special game a, a cup final that like have all the war flags and, and, and stuff like that, that that we need and you know make the players know that we're right behind them and then listen man, we're, we're fine but I'm not too too concerned no more because at the end of the day what for our pants more rich our pants um and Burnley uh, you know they're Burnley in it so <laughs> uh, we we have a, a better squad than all of them to be honest with you so and we we do to be fair on, on paper now with, with those signings we should stay up for me it's in the players hands and yeah. Eddie Howe's hands in it and like you said keep everything going at St James Park as you can see in the background of this video there you got the display the other night was incredible yeah. man like these, these flags Crazy. that are in the Leesers now that that safer flag in the in the Gallagher again it's just uh, one of a kind St James's Park when it's rocking like that isn't it and like Trippier said 
even though he's played for England at a final, even though he's played at Atletico Madrid, he said it was electric, like something he's never felt before. So we need to keep that going. And it could be the the 12th man that makes a difference in it and keeps yeah. us up, really. Spurs and the team on. My, my twin says to me all the time, like, listen, like, Newcastle, that like, we do it every year, you know, we they scare us for for a large chunk of the season, you know, like you know, there's there's always that threat of us going down, and then somehow come March or April, that took is gone. <laughs> so this still this still could be the case because our, our fixtures are quite generous as well. Um, the, the harder games come towards the end of the right at the season. end, I so yeah. uh, we were playing teams that that we could actually beat. Regardless of, of where they are in the league, we can beat these teams. Um, Brentford as well. What Brentford like, away? Why can't why can't we go to Brentford and beat them? You know, so these are what, three four games that we could, could actually win, and then we're clear. Literally, we're clear. <laughs> <laughs> so and then you then, beat you beat the likes of Brentford as well, and you bring them into it, like with the exactly. Rabbit. So so it's it's you know um, everything is is in our hands and. Um, we have to make sure that we sort of take it and, and sort of continue going with, with just this sort of buzz um, that we have going on. And this is what Callum was saying, and this is what you kept saying, mate. I remember the fan calm after the uh, disappointing defeat at the Emirates at Arsenal when we got beat and you weren't, you weren't even bothered. You were just like, man, well, I know how good it's going to be in a few years. Yeah, so I'm going to get through this. And like Callum says, and we were seeing how decent that January was, how hectic it was, how many players were linked. Just imagine if we stay up in the summer, what the window will be like. And even if we go down, we'll come back up, how good it can be in a few years under this new ownership. Yeah, listen, it doesn't matter because me, me and you both, me and you both, we're about the same age and we both haven't seen our team win anything. Mm. You know, like, I remember um, there was this like, there was this pre-season cup as well, yeah? this was years ago, years ago, and I think we lost to like Deportivo. Was it like 05, 04? Uh, I remember that. Um, and then, even then, I, then me, me being like, I think I was like, I don't know, 11, 12, 13, them times. And then I thought to myself, we, we, we can't even win our own preseason cup. So we <laughs> haven't seen our team win a trophy ever. So, but at least now, Makash is gone and, and we have the new, the new ownership. And by the way, for the next half of seasons, we're going to be top up there with big spenders, by the way. So, People should now get used to it because now, now, now it's it's, it's our turn to, to be number one when it comes comes to spending. So, with all that being said, all that brings brings that all that is going to bring success because when not QPR, like like I hate, I hate when people say, "Oh, but um, teams that like QPR had money." It's not, it's not it's not the same. Don't piss me off. It's not the same. Like, <laughs> like, people were saying it to me, me on deadline day, like oh, but Ev- Everton Everton have spent Everton have spent half a billion. And, and, and look where they are, but it's, it's not funny. the same. Everybody knows that everyone's comparing our takeover to cities because mm. it's sort of it's 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 that sort of group that like it's 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 that side of the world, you know. When when they're involved, <laughs> it's serious business. They ain't PSG, playing around. PSG Man City, do you get me? So the the, the guys at QPR and, and, and Everton, they don't they don't have the wealth that that that, that we have. So. Um, and also the fact that Ashley left the club in profit as well. So all these things, we're, we're going to be up there in, with big spenders and that will, will bring us trophies and success. So like I said before, which now doesn't apply, but if, even if we were to go down, I, I'm not bothered because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm, I'm going to see us win a Carling Cup. Or, 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 <laughs> so uh, at some point, and I'm going to go to Wembley at some point, but that wasn't the case a couple months ago. So yeah. you know it, it's calm, man. So and the the pictures that, that we saw on Tuesday with the fans with, with the flags. Imagine when we're winning trophies, <laughs> yeah, mate. I can't even because like I was saying, I was saying, to, I was saying to you before we came on, before we came live on air, like, oh, mate, it was class the other night, leaving the ground, everyone smiling, singing. There was lads just like on top of the. Um, on top of the signs again, like the way when the takeover got announced, on top of the brick walls, like just waving scarves. So like we've just we've only beaten Everton, who are 16 3 1. We were going on, like we just won a cup or qualify for top four. It's exactly. going to be insane if yeah. we actually ever win anything, which, like mm. you say, hopefully it's a matter of time with this with this new ownership. But I couldn't even imagine how the scenes will be, they'll just and, be ridiculous. And just to say as well, our fans that like, we're not going to be the Man City, like you know. 
we're, we're never going to need the manager to say to us, oh, please come to games. Or no. Come. Because, because it's different. Like, our we were selling out the championship, man. Selling out the championship games, it's, man. It's different. Like, our struggle is different from, from Man City because Man City were, were nobodies before. And they were nobodies. So we were actually somebody. So we know how we know how it feels to, to, to be a, a, a big club. Whereas City had nothing and then they they got everything. And then when that happens to you, you sort of lose it, lose the value of it. But whereas for us fans, it's like where even if we win all, all the trophies in the world, we're still gonna be the same way. That ground is it's still it's still gonna be rocking, it's still gonna be packed. Like us fans, we we deserve it anyways, but you know, like that's that's not how we are uh, as as people. So um, I'm not so con- 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 concerned about that, anyways. But them days are coming. But for for now, we've got, got a battle to to face, and we've got to take it game by game. Villa, Villa first, then West Ham and Brentford. So Aaron saying, there, imagine when we finally win a trophy. I was on Dio Sports and got asked how long it's going to take to win the league. I see that. I said, I, I said four years. Be cheeky. That's a bit crazy, you know, you know? Know? I was just be cheeky, mate. You know, you know, I was like, oh, Robbie didn't say which league, did he? So I may have been talking about the championship. But, <laughs> but uh, how long do you think it'll be until we win a trophy? Not just the league, call and cup, whatever you want. So now I want to change into, I don't know, man. I, I, Three years, four years? No, 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 no. Because that first trophy is always the hardest to win. So mm. when, when we win the first one, then. I think it took City. Was it City? It took City four years. Was it the winning trophy? I think. I yeah, think. but I, I feel like football there was different, man. Like, I feel like. Well, it wasn't as competitive, was, was it? Yeah, it was. It, was it, it. It's not the same. So again, people shouldn't compare us to Man City, anyways. But how long would it take to win a trophy? A trophy, league, league cup, and FA Cup. I don't know, man. Because we, I think what 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 we're going to see first is progress in cup competitions. Before, so it's like obviously you know semi-finals, quarter-finals, semi-finals, last four semi-finals, a, a final, maybe even lose that. But and then, so we have we would have the good experience of getting into the later stages and then mm-hmm. knowing how to win, win it. So win. It's like England, isn't it? It's like England now, mate. We're getting yeah. you finally getting there. Like we had the semis at the World Cup, exactly. we had the final at the Euros. There you go. And you need that experience in it, and then once once England get that first trophy with the other youngins coming through. There you, go. You, think you, you get that mentality, you know, you get that expectation, you get that, you get used to it, like anything, you get used to it. But yeah, so I'll say, I'll say a trophy, I, I'll say six, seven years, say six, seven years, honestly. But it all depends on when I think everything depends on top four. When we get top four, that's when it changes completely because then we can, Caliber. Get, yeah, like we, 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 we can get any, whoever we want because now, because now players want to come for the money now, could they be, could they be coming to win the league? And to play in Champions League, so mm. when it happens, yeah, then then is it's over. So these these big these big six teams and and and, and West Ham and and the other boys, they, they should try and make us not get top four because once it happens, it's a wrap. <laughs> it's like because yeah, this right. is what we were saying before, like. The, on, a, on a show I was on earlier today, uh, Lee Chappie Leicester fan was saying he thinks Newcastle will be the next Man City, but he was saying. That will it be a problem where we are being based in Newcastle, further up north, because players no. are moving to London or no, Manchester? Man. Do you think that's going to be an issue or not? No, no I don't think it's not either, man. I think that's, yeah, I think that's a bullshit. Like, no, it. I feel like that's that's just a talk sport crap, that, isn't it? When they always say that talk sport, they would want to go to Newcastle. That is just a pundit's mentality of of trying to be little Newcastle under Ashley, because I'm guarantee you the same people weren't saying that when we were actually in the the Champions League before and previously and, and sort of breaking record signings and getting the, the sharers in and doing all that stuff and, and, mm. and getting the, the guys in. So I feel like, it yeah, it's, it's, it's crap. It's, it's rubbish it's, because because at the end of the day in football, money talks and trophies talk as well. Right? So if, if, if we're winning trophies, regardless of if we are in the, the, the sea, players will come. <laughs> so that for me isn't a worry. Because at the end of the day, it's still it, it, we're still in England, so it's it's, it's not like like, like like it's crazy far. It's it's fine, man. Um, and the new ownership, they will transform the city as well, you know. And they they will make new Newcastle an attractive place. So 
to, to, to come and build new new airports and have flights coming in from the, from the Saudi like the guys at, at, at City done with, 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 with uh, Etihad. You know they they, they mm. made their own campus there, and that's what I believe um, the new guys will will do for us: transform that city and make it attractive. Because at the end of the day, you have to make the city attractive um, to also attract players as well. So. That that stuff is rubbish. Towards it is crap. I think the new owners will want to do their version of an Etihad campus. You know, because they they're taking a keen interest in the women's side of things. They've talked about the tra- the current training grounds getting a whole re over this summer, so that's getting completely refurbished. Yeah, and it'll only it'll only be a couple of years time before not that, not that fuck that down, and you build a new one. Do you know what I mean you build a new one near the stadium? You build a new one in the city? You build. The, the, you've seen the Newcastle United foundations getting built for the kids near St James's. So, yeah, it'll be class when we get like a proper structuring, like a proper campus, a proper whole club, a whole club being properly developed with the women's, the academy, everything put in place. And a big part of that, mate, is going to be Dan Ashworth, who's meant yeah. to be coming in from Brighton, um, r- responsible of you know changing England, responsible of the FA's DNA, responsible yeah. of taking Brighton from no disrespect, nobody's to a uh, Solid Premier League club, you know, good yeah. signings in likes of Basuma, good appointment in Potter as manager. Is uh, Ashwaf? Do you think that's a good appointment? That is fantastic to be honest with you. So it's, I think is is just as just as us getting Tripler in, you know, is 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 on on that that level. But I know I said uh, uh, the director of football isn't isn't a priority, and for me it still wasn't. To be me, the priority was getting players in, mm. but um, the fact that it seems like we're Going to get Ashraf in, I, I, I think that takes us that takes us now to the next level in terms of the club, the behind the scenes, and and sort of the culture of the club, and you know change, change, change is happen, happening right before our eyes, um, and to me it's perfect uh, because we've we've brought in somebody who knows English football like the back of his hand, yeah, um, like, like 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 you're saying the work he, he's done with the FA and Brighton. So he knows he knows English football like, like, like the back of his hand, and he would have the trust of, of the owners and stay with you. So um, it's 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 smart, man. It's smart business, you know. I've, there's nothing there's nothing to be negative about anymore, that. Right? So you know, it's, it's great, and, and I'm glad that we are able to do this, and then watch 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 this back in in the, the last next five years, and say, oh, this this is where we were then, and the fact that we get to do this and also see our journey and do it during during our changes. Do you get me? So it's uh it's great, it's, it's great, man. But I think you know what's gonna be class, mate? It'll be looking back on our fan cams during lockdown, putting up with Brucey Ball, getting yeah. beat off Sheffield United. I had, no hair years, well. mate. <laughs> <laughs> mate, I had the I had the blonde jewel in on haircut, mate. It was all dead. I had like, <laughs> I, had, like I didn't cut my hair for like three months or so and, 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 and I, I come on, I, I was just bad, but I was just miserable. I was thinking <laughs> Get Bruce out, of man. Steve Bruce, Steve Bruce, Steve, Steve Bruce. It was mad, but now, now it's like you know what? Because at the end of the day, everything that we've asked for, we you know we have it now. Ashley's gone. Who, by the way, who, 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 who? What's his name? He's gone. So, 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 so uh, it it feels even weird or negative me saying his name because it's like he's not been put anymore. If you seen him in the street now, mate, what would you do? Would you just just? What would you do this time? Oh, gosh, hey! <laughs> hey, what's going on, mate? Good. Can I get a picture, mate? Can I get a picture, actually? <laughs> Cheers, <laughs> mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm, mate, listen, I'm so sorry about what I did to you as I crossed up, but it was needed, and now you're gone. So, friends, yeah? Cheers, cheers for holding out for PIF, mate. Thanks for that, mate. Here's a good question from uh, Callum, and get them in as we're closing on the end of this show. Would you keep Eddie Howe long-term if he does well, or go for a bigger name? Um, it's a tricky one that because I want to judge him just on results and so far results and performances we're getting there yeah. the state of players getting there you know we stay up see how it goes would you trust him with big sums of money in the summer obviously Ashworth's going to have a big input on that as well as, as maybe someone else but Eddie how how long would you keep him you know what what, what do you think about that Pochettino is available in the summer mate yeah I know but it's, I, I, there's 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 a thing in life called morals, yeah. Mm. And you know that like, Eddie Howe, I think his downfall is yeah, is that his downfall is, is his, his success. Because because he was so su- successful at Bournemouth, but because Bournemouth are, Bournemouth weren't really a, an established club. 
So people don't give him the credit that he actually deserves. Look at what he done with Bournemouth. That should mm. just tell you how good of a manager this guy actually is. Um, and <laughs> people are at a point where talk talking about him for England. So uh, let's 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 back this man because we've seen what he can do with a club like Bournemouth, take them from wherever they was in League Two to 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 actually being quite consistent in the Premier League and beating teams at United and the Cities or whatever. So um, if we look at what he's done at Bournemouth and let him apply that at a bigger stage where he where he's backed and where he's trusted and where the fans love him. Uh, so he's now at that next level. Why would we not want to keep him unless sort of we back him and then sort of think things are going wrong? You know? mm. So for for example, we we, we spend in the summer, I don't know, two hundred million, we buy in the bottomers and whoever, and we're still seventeenth or eighteenth and sixteenth. Then yeah, sack him. Well, it's, it's time to go. Do you get me? But until then, I believe he is the the, the right guy for the near long term future. So the next five five years until we get to that 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 place where you know what maybe he might be out of his depth until we get to, to that stage and bring in somebody who is suitable for that level like the the Pochettinos or, or the Contes and whoever these crazy fans have wanted um uh, previously um keep him why not mm-hmm. yeah agree man agree I think we've got to give him time and we've got to give him to stamp his authority on the club, get his own players in, and then let like you see, judge him in a year's time. This time next year, if we're floating around 13th, 15th, and we're not playing well, we're getting beat, you know, the performances aren't great, then then you'd look into it. But surely, if it keeps you up, you'd expect it. Well, they never know the owners, they might take a, a Roman Abramovich approach. They might just be ruthless, man. They might just be like, well, thanks for keeping up, Eddie, but now we've got a fresh canvas. We're starting uh-huh. the league on zero points. That we're, was, just that, we're just gonna get Pochino We're just gonna get uh that'll be bad. Over and, yeah. That, that that won't sort of sit well with 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 fans, that won't sit well with the players. Uh, True. because I feel like you know players players trust you during a struggle. So mm. you know, if if you're taking that away, you know, it, it just doesn't look good, you know, because you when you're struggling, that's when you you know who has your back and that's when you you bond. And you know you you sort of stick together, and then when when you when you come 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 out of that struggle, you know you're like this now. So now to to break that up, no, it's not smart. I don't, don't want to you know, don't want to be like a, a waffle do a you know what I mean? Just chopping and change the minders all the time. No, no, no. Hopefully, ho- hopefully how Callum's got Keegan in his picture there. Hopefully how can be our Keegan, a young exciting manager coming. Do a job. Do a job for a while. Push us up the league. Yeah. Jackie mentions that Shira's statue is getting moved. Apparently, the club have applied to the council to move Shira's statue, rightfully so, from outside the ground to in front of the ground. If you can see that image there, that's where it's going to be. Just, that. next, just next to Sir Bobby Robson's statue. Uh, that'll look much better, won't it? And where he belongs inside the fucking actual stadium grounds apart from instead of on the but, street next to wait. Tesco. Wait, but what, what's... Because, because I think... Uh, what I can recall, what is wrong with, with where it is? It's not actually on stadium grounds because Ashley wouldn't. Ashley fell out with Shira. He didn't let him have it next to the stadium, so they want to pay a bit more respect and actually have him front and centre of the stadium, just like Sir Bobby Robson's is. Do you know what I mean? Because right. his right now is just it's on a street, mate. That's not even on St James Park land. I'm I'm after a picture because I've got a picture of it and. I didn't really see the issue about where it was, but I mean, I guess I mean if 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 it needs to be moved, then yeah, move it then because it's Shira and and Shira, Shira, Shira is my hero um, in football and and out of football to be honest with you. So mm. give the man the respect that he deserves totally. Do one more. This one here. Or is it that one here? That one there, right? Yeah. So you just see how it's on a random street, mate. It's opposite student accommodation. Do you know what I mean we need oh, that? Yeah. Get that get that in the in the grounds actual Makes sense. vicinity. Do you know what I mean? And put it put them next to Bobby. Lovely stuff. Get the last couple of questions in before this wrap on up. We've been on for an hour. Make sure you are smashing that like button and subscribing while you are here. Um get pop bottom in the summer plus at your TK, but we'll see if we'll go back in for those. Yeah, there used to be a public toilet where the statue is now. Actually, must have loved that. <laughs> the disrespect, man. Mm-hmm. Um, Carl mentions we've just been talking about managers there. Will Eddie Howe stay long term? 
he said he doesn't want Mourinho ever. Now, obviously, Mourinho always seemed to be maybe linked with Newcastle. Didn't he always had so much respect due to the Bobby Robson and relationship he had, coming to St. James's Park. What do you think about a Mourinho? I could have seen him maybe getting appointed when we first got taken over if he was out of work. But would you see Mourinho working in Newcastle? Is he past it now as my United fans and Spurs yeah. fans will allude to? You know what it is? I feel like the same thing with Deli Ali. If we signed if we signed Deli Ali, we would be doing him a favour. Um, if we were to get in just Jose Mourinho, we will be doing him a favour again. Um, because it's, it's like, you know, <laughs> he, he's still a great manager and and, and I love him the bits. Um, I don't think he's good. He's going to manage the top big six again. Obviously, the the big six, yeah. the, the, the the so-called part-time big six, those guys. <laughs> um, um, but uh, if he was to come back to the Premier League, it, it would make sense for it. It's with Newcastle, but I would have wanted because I just feel like he his his time is sort of moved on now, and we we need sort of somebody who's modern and and sort of un- understands the modern players. We don't need somebody that's going to dig out some maximum. <laughs> at all, <laughs> just so so. No, I wouldn't take Jose. Um, I'll take some somebody else that's probably younger and fresher. Mm, yeah, that's yeah. the way forward, I think. Yeah. But let's hope we can get how to do the business for it. Before we go, mate, what's the score going to be on Sunday? Ah, two one, just, two one, two one win. Two Easy. one win, love it, man. That's what we're here two for. One. Tune therapy, positive vibes, positive two vibes. One how about you? I'm, I'm going to go 2 1 as well, mate. I'm going to go yeah. 2 1 as well. I think it will be close, mind. I could possibly say a 1 1, but because we're on tune therapy, I'm going 2 1, mate. I'm, I'm going 2 1. <laughs> <laughs> but 1 1 wouldn't be the worst time, but I'm going to go 2 1. I'm going to go yeah. 2 1. Uh, going to try it again. Chris Wood, first goal, manifest it. Yeah, manifest right. it. Hey, Chris Wood, let's not talk about him just yet. It's just yet. Let's, let's, <laughs> let's wait till. After the game, <laughs> he scored the other night, but it was disallowed. Bounced off his knee. You know even I mean? that man, if, even that looks shaky. Like, uh, yeah, but anyway, let's 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 be positive about everyone, and then let's judge him on his third game for us. Yeah, yeah, right. Big up, bro. Good seeing you, mate. Yeah, pleasure, man. And big up everyone in the comments. Keep them coming in. Subscribe to my by Channel TV, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>